Hello and welcome to Spring Security, a lab integration and SAML extension. Section 3, we are talking about SAML, SAML extension in the Spring Security. Now in this section, we will learn what is SAML, what are the core modules, how can you configure Spring Security with SAML, and we will see the runtime application of SAML for the Spring Security and how can you develop and deploy it. And at the end, we would be testing the single sign-on and the known issues with SML2 of Spring Security. Now, the first video in this series is what is and how SAML works. So let's first understand the scenario, what the SAML resolve, what kind of issues SAML resolve, right? So let's say there is a company an organization having lots of employees and this organization having different different application so first application is attendance and leave management system right second application is learning and training this could be a phone application it's not a web application it's a phone application it's a phone app the third application is employee finance system and the fourth application is employee healthcare system so there could be more applications too now these application might be outsourced to third party so your company might not have any regulations over the employee finance system because it has been outsourced to some other company to take care of, right? Healthcare has been sent to some other third party. Now what happens is they are having their own database to store the user and password for your employees. So your employees once tries to access these applications, they have to register with their database and choose the username and password accordingly and then tries to log in. So let's say there are four applications. So user has to, if he wants to, let's say, log in into learning and training, then he has to provide the username and password corresponding to their database. And then if he wants to log into healthcare system, the application four, he would have to give the corresponding username password, which he registered in their database, right? Now let's say an intelligent person comes in or say, no, I don't want different, different database. Why would I give my employees a headache to remember those kind of password and those credentials of different different application rather what I will do is I'll create an here the requests are coming up to the application now instead of these database I will create an LDAP with transfer layer security TLS so that would be LDAP and somehow configure it to access these four applications will be accessing the read only scope would be there and would be accessing this LDAP server to get the identity of user which is logging in. But still, now your one problem has been resolved that there are no separate database and user don't have to remember different different credentials or whatsoever he has registered with the application. But the problem with this solution is also that your employee has to log in separately. So if you want to log into attendance and leave management system after the learning and training phone application, you would have to register once again with the attendance and leave management system because it would be asking the authentication once again back to LDAP to check the identity. There is no other option. So user have to log into different different application, right? Now to resolve such kind of issues, SAML comes in. Now what SAML will do? Now SAML is security assertion markup language it's based on XML. Let's see, to be talking about one employee and the same thing happens with the several employee. The same application, application one attendance, learning, finance and healthcare. We call them service provider in SAML. So I am an employee, I want to log into attendance and leave management system. So this application is a service provider, which is providing the service for leave management system. There is another application which is providing the service for learning and training, right? So these are service provider. Now I will be having an IDP, which is called identity provider. We got two things, SP service providers, IDP identity provider. Now, what is this identity provider? Identity provider is just a server. It could be Octa, it could be WSO2. And this identity provider, which will be having some kind of LDAP server or some database where it would be storing the user and password. That means the credential of the employees. 
So if I talk about, let's say for an example, the blue SO2 identity server, it takes the Apache directory server as in backend and lab server to store the credentials. Now, how can it overcome the limitations of user would be logging into multiple application and will have to log into multiple time. So how can you give the users a privilege to log in once and can access all the application when these all the application are in different domain or you don't have the access or it could be of third party. It's not a single application, right? See what happens. Now employee tries to log into let's say employee finance system. Now the application which is employee finance system will see that there is no current session with the employee. That means there is no J session key, J session ID cookie in your web browser. So it will connect to identity server provider and will send a request having the SAML request. We call it SAML request, which would be an XML file. Now this application is sending a request to identity provider. Now this request will be going through employee web browser. So employee will be presented with identity provider login page, right? Now employee will be authenticating to identity provider login page. Now identity provider will be having a login page and this page is displayed by your application three when it sent the SML request, which is an XML file through your web browser. Now, once the employee authenticates with the identity provider, will send a SAML response. If the authentication is successful, it will send a SAML response called assertion. Assertion is nothing, but assertion is a part of this SAML response XML file, which will be storing the authentication detail. So identity provider will be responding with SAML response, which is an XML file. Now your application three will validate this SAML file. And before that, what happens is, your identity provider will be sending a cookie to your employee. This cookie is let's say called IDP session cookie. So identity provider has created a session for you because you have already authenticated successfully. So it created a session for you and sent you a IDP session cookie and sent a SAML response XML file to application three. Now application three will validate this SAML response file. And if the validation goes successful, sends a session cookie to employee. So there would be two separate cookies, one sent by identity provider and another sent by your application three. So far so good, employee has been logged into application three and accessing employee finance system, right? Now, let's say employee logs out from application three, right? Now, let's say employee logs out of application three. So there would be no connection with the application three with the identity server provider and the session cookie will also get deleted. But one thing remain consistent is IDP session cookie with the employee because this will be invalidated after a certain period of time. It has been sent by the identity server provider to the employee unless employee do the global logout. He just log out from the application three. We will see what is a global logout. Now let's say employee tries to log into another application, application four, which is healthcare system. Now this application four will see there is no current session, right? There is no J session ID sent by application four. So it will once again send a SAML request to identity server provider to validate the user, which is coming in is the to authenticate the user, which is coming in. Now your identity server provider will check your employee and see there is already a session cookie sent by me. Oh, this employee has been already authenticated with some other application because it has the session cookie sent by identity server provider itself. So it will directly send a SAML response to your application instead of re-authenticating, instead of prompting user to re-authenticate, it will send the SAML response to application four. So user didn't have to log in once again to access the healthcare system because he had the identity provider session cookie with him. So that's how SAML overcome the limitation of having to log in multiple time to access different kind of application. So when I say different, one application could be phone application, 
phone app or it could be web app desktop app so those things right so saml overcomes this limitation so that's called single sign on single logout so the local logout for this user would be to log out from particular application let's say application 4 and the global logout will delete the idp session cookie as well so that next time user tries to log in would need to authenticate because that's the end of the session of identity server provider by doing the global logout